this is the most important rook and pawn versus rook. Well, one of the two most important. This is the Lucina position. Uh, the key features are that white's king is on the queening square in front of his pawn, and black's pieces have white's king hemmed in. For example, his rook on g1 controls a g file, where keeping white's king from moving over there, and black's king controls the key e8 and e7 squares, keeping white's king from moving there. So at the moment, white's king can't move, and without his king moving, his pawn cannot advance. So obviously, white is going to want to try to remedy that, and the typical way is by checking and driving black's king away. And um, we'll see that here. We will go over the main line. White starts with rook d2 check. Black's king moves to c7. Now white does a rook lift to d4. The point of this is he's going to do what's called build a bridge on his fourth rank. And you'll see why this is important in a few minutes. Okay, Black moves his rook to e1, just keeping white's, he can't keep white's king from coming out any longer, but he just uh, keeps white's king from coming out this side towards his king, so white comes out the other side. Uh, white's threatening to promote, black checks, white moves forward, remember he doesn't want to go back to f8 because that blocks the promotion square, the, the queening square, so he moves king f6, black checks rook f1 check, white moves king e6, Black checks again with rook e1. Now, instead of going back to f6, white comes up to f5. This was the point of moving the rook to the fourth rank. He's threatening to queen the pawn, so black checks. And now white interposes his rook with rook f4 and wins. And this was the key idea, the rook lift to the fourth, to white's fourth rank, building this bridge, which allows uh, white's rook to block the checks from black's rook, which will allow it to queen. That's the main line. Now let's go back and look at some deviations. For example, after rook d2 check, black is not forced to go to c7. He could go to c6 or e6. Well, let's look at those. First, e6 looks kind of natural. I mean, his the problem was black's king was driven away from the pawn. Why not move the king right towards the pawn? Well, white just moves king e8. By black moving to the E file, he has blocked checks by his own rook. So now white's just going to promote the pawn. There's nothing black can do but give up his rook for it. So king E6 loses very quickly. So back to rook D2. We've seen king E6 loses quickly. King C7 is the main line. What about king C6? The, kind of, the idea of king C6 is to uh, try to stop the building of a bridge to some extent you know, uh, coming closer to white's fourth rank. But black's king belongs on c7 in a sense because c7 protects d8. As it is, white can just shuffle his king across the uh, eighth rank, which he does as follows. King e8 threatening to promote. Rook e1 checks. King d8. See, if black's king were on uh, c7, white's king couldn't go there. White's threatening to promote. Black moves back to f1, both threatening the pawn and stopping the promotion. White moves rook to d7, uh, protecting the pawn. Black moves rook to a1. The idea is that he can check from either the front or from the side. That's a typical maneuver, uh, giving white two things to worry about. White just plays king e8. He's threatening the queen. Uh, rook e1 check. Rook e7 blocks the check, and black's going to have to give up his pawn to stop that from queening next turn. So that covers the early deviations. The main line is rook d2 check, king c7. We've seen king, king e6 loses quickly, king c6, and white moves his king across the back rank. So king, king, king c7 is the main line, rook d4 to build the bridge, rook e1, king c7, rook g1 check, king f6, rook f1 check, king e6. Now if you notice, white is not threatening the pawn, uh, queen the pawn this move, so black has a little bit of time. He can temporize with rook f2. Obviously white can't queen, but what white does here is just, instead of building his uh, bridge on the fourth ranks, which is to build it on the fifth. Now he's just going to uh, move the rook over here and queen the pawn. So typical play would be rook e2 check, rook e5 blocking, 
rook f2, preventing um, queening, rook f5, rook e2 check, king f6, and black can't stop it from promoting. Let's go back to the main line again, running through it. Here black has some choices. Here black has some choices. Rook f2 temporizing. We saw loses because white just starts building his bridge on the fifth rank. Um, another uh, option is king c6. Here he stops white from building his bridge on the fifth rank because after rook d5, blunder, just rook take f7. So after king c6, Rook d5 would be a blunder trying to build the bridge. Well, uh, white just changes his plans to rook c4 check, driving black's king somewhere on the b-file, even farther away from the pawn. So let's look at king b6, uh, uh, trying to prevent white from building his uh, bridge on the fifth rank. Well, white just switches gears, moves the rook to the eighth rank, because now he's threatening to promote that pawn. How does black stop it? Well, black can throw in a few checks, but notice that white's king is not needed to promote the pawn, so his king just starts running away. Actually starts running away and towards black's rook. Now, black is going to have to you know, occupy the F file and then give up his rook for the pawn. Back through the main line, rook d2 check, king c7, rook d4, rook e1, rook king g7, rook g1 check, king f6, rook f1 check, king e6. Uh, rook f2, the temporizing move, loses because rook d5, white builds the bridge on the fifth rank. King c6, there's another option here. King c6, attempting to uh, prevent white building the bridge, rook c4 check. We saw that king b6, to prevent building the bridge, white just moves the rook to the eighth rank and wins. So what about king b7, preventing white from moving to the uh, eighth rank? Well, now he builds his brink his bridge on the fifth rank again. Rook e1 check, rook e5, rook f1, rook f5, rook e1 check, king f6, and he wins. White wins. Okay, so finally, that takes care of all the deviations. So the main line again, rook d2 check. If he goes to e6, it's a quick win with king e8. If he goes to c6, white's king can shuffle along the back rank because black's king does not control d8. Okay, so the main move is king c7. Rook d4, the rook left by white to the fourth rank, attempting to build the bridge. Rook e1, black stops white from coming out this side. King g7, threatening the queen. Rook g1, check. King f6, moving the king not to f8, which would block the pawn again. Rook f1, check. King e6. Now rook f2, temporizing. Black, uh, white moves his Rook here to build the bridge on the fifth. If king c6, white checks. And if black prevents uh, white from building on the fifth, he goes to the eighth. If he goes to b7 to prevent white from going to the eighth, white goes to the fifth and builds his bridge. So the main move here is rook e1 check, king f5, rook f1 check, rook f4, building the bridge and winning. So as we can see, uh, White wins in the Lucina position, but there are a few sidelines that he must be aware of. And that concludes this video for this Rook and Pawn ending.